Okay, the next thing that we looked at was the behavior of these ions with ammonia. And notice I've got first and second. What you had to do here was you had to take your metal ion solution in water that we've seen before and add some NH3 to it. And what will happen in every case is you will get a precipitate. In that case, the ammonia is just acting as a base. OK, so the first one in each case should have been the same result that you saw for the hydroxides. OK, because all we're doing is we're just essentially adding in a base, adding hydroxide. What's then interesting is when you keep adding ammonia to it. So that's the second addition of ammonia. So let's see what happens. And I've got lots of pictures here, so I've kind of broken it down a little bit. So first of all, cobalt 2 plus. Cobalt 2 plus starts off at a nice pink um, solution. We then add in some base. And if you remember for the hydroxide, we could see the precipitate a little bit better. There's sort of blue green precipitate here that you get when you just essentially just precipitate out the cobalt ions with hydroxide ions because you've added a base. But then we keep adding the ammonia. And what we're doing here is we're now adding in the ammonia as a ligand. And that ammonia will help dissolve up the hydroxide to give you this pink solution. So again, you can see there's some of the um, blue green precipitate that I haven't really acted up yet but there's some of that pink solution coming back again that is essentially a cobalt ions with some ammonia bonded to it ligands ammonia ligands bonded and water ligands bonded to it don't think you necessarily needed to know that for the cobalt but you do need to know it for the copper two plus here's our copper two plus at the start nice light blue solution we add in some first ammonia the ammonia acts as a base gives us that pale blue precipitate that's exactly the same that we saw when we took the copper ions and added hydroxide to it. Keep adding ammonia to it though and you get this glorious deep blue precipitate formed, excuse, excuse me, deep blue solution formed. Again, it dissolves up that precipitate. I've left a bit of the precipitate there at the bottom, you can see, but the bulk of the precipitate has dissolved back again as the ammonia acts as a ligand. Here it's a base. Further ammonia acts as a ligand. And the reaction that you've got going on there, and this is again rather ugly looking, but if we say took the copper two plus for the metal, copper with six waters on it, reacts up with a couple of hydroxides that are formed by ammonia being in there acting as a base, and you make that copper hydroxide, that's that pale blue precipitate. Keep adding ammonia in there, and you go back to an octahedral copper that has four ammonias and two waters coordinated to it. OK, making this glorious dark blue solution. Again, you don't need to know this for the A-level, but repetition of the concept is always good. Fe2+, plus, remember, starts off as that. Okay, actually, it kind of almost looks reddish there, doesn't it, with that perspective? But that's that yellowy green solution. We add in some ammonia and we get that green precipitate, that dirty green precipitate that you saw when we added the hydroxide to it. Keep adding ammonia to it. And it goes to a dirty green solution. You can start to see the solution up there, a little bit of precipitate floating around. Now, something that's important about Fe2 plus is it very easily is oxidized to Fe3 plus. So you might remember at the start of the whole thing, I said that the first few groups didn't get to see truly Fe2 plus because unfortunately the solution had immediately, um, well, not immediately, but by the time it was there for you oxidized into the Fe3 plus. And just to show you how quickly that happens, here was the solution, that dirty green solution of Fe2 plus with some ammonias and waters around it. 10 minutes later, this is what it looked like. You see how it's oxidizing to that deep red solution that is indicative of Fe3 plus. Okay, so Fe2 plus very easily oxidized to Fe3 plus. Talking about Fe3 plus, when it's just Fe3 plus in water, it's that yellowy brown solution. Add in some base and you get that brown precipitate. Again, familiar, uh, should be familiar to what we saw when we added sodium hydroxide. Again, I've let it so that you can see some of the original solution there, but there's the um, ammonia being added. Add more ammonia and you can see here it's starting to dissolve it up again into a brown yellow solution. Okay, so um, finally, Chromium 3 plus starts off as that nice deep blue 
if some would call it purple solution add a little bit of ammonia you get that yucky green green precipitate that's the chromium hydroxide now if i kept adding hydroxide to it remember this dissolves to give you a green solution if i keep adding ammonia to it it also dissolves to give you that glorious green solution there but this is not the octahedral CrOH six times three minus that we saw when we added hydroxide this is actually a chromium that's got some ammonia complex to it as well as some residual waters complex to it.